All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about Python functions in a little more depth than we previously have. So we've seen functions like this. So this is a function. Name of the function is my sum. It takes two arguments, a and b, and we're just going to return the sum of them. And we call the function like this. What we haven't talked about before is what type of arguments a and b are. In the way that the function is currently written, these are called positional arg arguments. In other words, the value of a is always going to be the first get taken as the argument that's in the first position of the function list. Same for argument b. b will always be the second. There's another type of arguments that we can have. They're known as keyword arguments. And in this case, um, the difference between a positional argument and a keyword argument is given by a, key a keyword argument always has an equal sign and some value. So for example, we could have something like this. In this case, a and b are now keyword arguments. And their default values are 2 and 3 in this case. So I can actually call this function as I've redefined it without any arguments at all. And if I do that, the default value of a is going to be 2 and the default value of b is going to be 3. So if I execute this, we get what we expect. With key keyword arguments, um, we can call them as we would positional arguments before. So we can say, give it two values, 4 and 5. And in this case, a will be take the value 4, b will take the value 5, and we'll get the sum, okay? We could also define them in reverse order, and I guess, for, let's to do that, we need um, an operation that the order matters, so let's say my subtract, and instead of adding the two numbers, let's subtract them from one another. And in this case, then, we can call the function and as long as we specify the argument, we can put b before a. Uh, but again, we have to specify what they are. And you know, in this case, we specified the keywords in the in the opposite order that they were originally defined. Um, but the operation here still uh, works correctly, right? So it's five minus one, and not the op not the other way around. So those are keyword arguments. There's another type of argument called a variable argument, and that's specified this way. So here we have this asterisk before our variable, variable arguments. What variable arguments is going to allow us to do is put in any number of arguments in the argument list. it will store those arguments in a list that you can then iterate over. Uh, for example, with this for loop, which computes the sum of the variable number of arguments. So again, the syntax for variable arguments would be to have an asterisk in front of them. Um, I guess I should say that you can mix and match positional arguments. Um, keyword arguments and variable arguments. So, so you, can, you can mix and match variable and keyword and positional arguments. However, the keyword arguments always have to come after the positional argument. So in this case, the variable argument is like the second positional argument. And if we, you notice this, when I call the function, uh, these numbers right here add to 13. The default value of 2 is then being added as well giving me the result 15. So that's an example of mixing and matching the different types of arguments. There's one final type of function that's very useful, uh, particularly in defining very small functions inside of other functions, things like that. And these are called lambda functions. 
So the syntax here, again, this is generally intended to be like a one-liner and not a very, you know, which would not be a, a terribly complicated function. In this case, the variable for the function is x and the body of the function occurs after the colon sign. So in this case, something like if we wanted to have x squared, this would define a function that takes an argument x and then of course squares it. So if we want to call this function, it would be like this. Um, we can also specify this as a keyword argument. So we could give it a default value of two. In that case, we could call the function without any arguments. Right? Um, we could also have lambda functions uh, that have mul uh, that are functions of multiple arguments. So in this case, say we have a function that's equal to or a function of two arguments x and y, and then just returns say x plus y. So this is a very very simple implementation of our original my sum, and we can call this with the two arguments like that. So this is a, uh, an example of a lambda functions, or in other languages, they're sometimes called anonymous functions as well. Uh, so you might hear them called that as well. 